Hello, greetings everybody. I want to welcome you here to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show, a show dedicated to sorry, progressive rock and other forms of rock music. So this is Wednesday afternoon and we're doing an episode of Wednesday Night Favorites. This week I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I haven't done many of these. I think the primary reason that I haven't done many of these is that until I own a fairly substantial amount of the studio discography for any given band, I don't really want to do the video until I have a fair bit of that. And I do, for this one, I do have quite a bit of it. So we're going to be starting with... the. So we're doing the rankings for... I just had to fix them back in the stack. They were kind of messed up there a bit. So we're doing the rankings of Pink Floyd's um, discography, their studio discography. There are 15 albums in this discography, or 15 discs in the discography. Um, I own 13 of the 15 albums. The two I don't own, you know, if I see them for a reasonable price, I'll get them, but I don't want to pay the price that some of these people want for these, what I call, not that great albums. Um, so normally what I do here, for those of you who are unfamiliar and I can't believe that because sorry ranking the albums is a common thing here on the YouTube um, and so I normally do pretty much the same as most people do I go from worst to first least to best 15th in this case to first and so that's where we're gonna start so we're gonna start with the last album in last place number 15 the endless river also coincidentally their last album that they did it's a bit of a throwaway album to be honest the word shit might describe this album basically it's leftovers from uh, the sessions they did with the division bell and they did that initially in order to get um, to give a kind of a tribute to the recently passed um, Richard Wright and I get that that they wanted to do something for him but this is hardly a fitting, um, a fitting tribute to his passing. It, it's such a crappy album, definitely. This funny thing about Pink Floyd, they have some of the very absolute best albums out there, and then they have some of the absolute worst albums as well, and this is one of them, The Endless River, so we'll come in number 15. The next one up is an album that I've had a great deal of difficulty get into, getting into. Um, I do like the album covers, as I do for most Pink Floyd albums. This one, Amagama, is the album. Really interesting hypnosis kind of cover that they got going back there, and everybody's moved a little bit into different spots as you look back further. Really psychedelic album. Um, the live album that comes with this is really good. The studio album... I'm not sure that I like this. I'm, I ha I've had a great deal of time getting into any of these parts. Syphilis, or Sis Sisyphus, sorry, Sisyphus, A Narrow Way, uh, The Grand Visor's Garden Party. Like, none of this stuff really, really does much for me. I do like the inside shot of the drums here. Um, you got shots of the members doing stuff here as well. And Roger, uh, Roger Waters over here as well. I mean... Yeah, that the visual part I like. The album itself, not that great. I wouldn't say it's it's not close to the same level as Endless River. It's passable. And in time, maybe it'll be better for me. But at this, as it stands right now, it's coming in number 14. Number 13 is the other album I do not own. I have listened to its entirety. To me, it's just I never really cared much for the wall sessions to begin with. And this is just another version, or lesser of a version of that session. Um, this is the, I think, mostly the stuff that was left over from the wall with some stuff put in there as well. But it's basically a Roger Waters solo album for the most part with a Pink Floyd label on it. And it's just not a great album. I think it's better than the two that it beats here though. So it's gonna come in at number 13 final cut uh, number 12 we go way back in time to their debut album Piper at the Gates of Dawn 
Um, if we were talking about this in the in the sense that it um, as an album released by a band and they didn't have this Pink Floyd label on it, maybe I would like it more. But I just think I've come to expect difference from Pink Floyd. It doesn't really sound like a Pink Floyd album. It's a lot a lot of poppy stuff. There are some psychedelic stuff in here, but there's nothing that indicates what was going to come in the future, at least to me. And different vocalists, Sid Barrett's on here, and not a bad singer, but I just don't think this, to me, just really doesn't really rank that high as a Pink Floyd album, although it is a little bit psychedelic. I do like that part about it. So coming in at number 12, Pipers at the Gate, Piper at the Gates of Dawn. This one, I, I almost was sure that I owned it at one point, but apparently I don't, so I bought it yesterday when I was out, or last weekend, sorry. Um, Pink Floyd's A Momentary Lapse of Reason. I have listened to this in its entirety several times. It's not a bad album, much better than the four predecessing albums. So this is where it starts to jump up a bit. Um, this album, I think in time it could grow on me a bit. It doesn't have Roger Waters lyrics or his musical masterpieces on here. And that doesn't necessarily hit it. It does sound like a Floyd album. I just think the, some of the stuff that they talk about is a little bit on the weak side, but it's not its not a terrible album by any stretch. I do like the album covers, of course. So next up, um, number 10, Pink Floyd's, uh, this is its their first kind of musical score for a movie uh, called More. Um, this is pretty good stuff. I, I do like this. There's. It's it's kind of bits and pieces. It's not really song structured like you would with a lot of albums where you get one song and you know that that's the song and then the next song and you know that that's the song. This is kind of a little bit cut and pasted pieces um, to fit whatever is going on in the movie, obviously. But it's not bad. I do like it. Um, this is probably the first of the albums that we are doing that I do like. Those first five I would say they're on the not like side of the coin. So you got, you know, one of my favorite bands where they got five albums I don't like, but Rush is the same way. They had at one point five albums I didn't like either. That's kind of changed a bit. But the same might happen here with Floyd eventually too. But for today, this comes in at number 10, more. Next one up is a bit of a jump. This album I like, I do like it. I think that the major tracks on here, the opening track, sorry, uh, one one of these days, really good, um, and the last track, of course, Echoes is absolutely killer. And um, there's a lot of stuff on here in the middle that is both good and not so good. Some of it is, uh, some parts of it are good, some parts of it are not so good. But overall, the album cover, of course, is killer. Another hypnosis cover, I'm sure. Absolutely great. Um, as so many of their covers are a nice shot of all four of them here although I think one of them's kind of bent over facing the screen and that would of course be his majesty David Gilmore <laughs> yeah oh sorry almost lost it there good album just not a great one next up I'm probably going to take a hit for this but that's okay it's just how we see them right next one up is the wall the wall of coming here at number eight. But if I'd done this video a couple years ago, this would have probably been down at number 14 or 13. That's how much I dislike the album. But I've bought it because I wanted to give it another chance. Sorry, it's kind of blurry here. Um, basically, a kind of a lame cover too for, for Pink Floyd. But... It does have some good stuff on it. Like there is some really good music on here. I I can see that now. I didn't. I wouldn't have conceded that at one point in time. I mean, it's got some of the tracks that I really like quite a bit. This particular one, because it's a double album, it has a lot of um, of inside stuff on it too. The two discs, of course, and uh, the booklet that comes with it. I mean, it does have uh, "Run Like Hell." It does have comfort. Um, comfortably numb you know there are some other tunes on here that are really good i think maybe it wouldn't be so low on the list if they could maybe just cut out one or one or two of the sides and just have like 
two fairly lengthy one-sided album would have been fine with me. But anyways, number eight, The Wall. Um, number number seven is Division Bell. It's a good album. Sounds very Floydish, not as sophisticated um, lyrically or storytelling as some of their other stuff has been because you know, Roger Waters is gone at this point. It's just basically just um, basically David Gilmore and Rick Wright. Is Rick Wright on this one? I'm trying to remember. I don't. I, I can't remember if he is or not. Anyways, I think he is. Anyways, um, they say that the cover is supposed to be Waters and. Uh, Gilmore facing each other eh, maybe I don't know I think one of them has more hair than this but that's fine anyways very interesting album not terrible by any stretch has a lot of good stuff on it very Floydish sounding I enjoy this album I do play it on occasion it's one of the ones I like to go to and I think I like it more than what's below it so I put it here at, at number seven the division belt Um, number six is another album that some people don't like find it bits and pieces it's another music score obscured by clouds I actually like this album a lot especially on headphones I think this is one of my favorite of their albums to listen to on headphones it's grown on me even more over the last year or so um, I've had periods of time where I really liked it and other periods I didn't like it at all and then I kind of come, I've kind of gone back and forth and now I've settled on it being an album I do like it is, of course, another music score, which they did for a movie, but because they didn't hand, didn't end up having a kind of conflict with the people at the movie who put the movie out, they decided to change the name to Obscured by Clouds. Yeah, a lot of good tracks on here, a lot of stuff that I like. Obscured by Clouds, number six. Number five, now, these next five I love, all of them. Um, this one is so good, Saucer Full of Secrets, their second album, very psychedelic, not so much like Pink Floyd that you've come to know, but this is really good. All the tracks on here I like a lot, really psychedelic in nature, really good, kind of heavy in parts too, and the album cover, of course, I think is the first of their Hypnosis album covers. This is really good, um, fantastic album, Saucer Full of Secrets, number five. Number four, this is an album that's kind of got a funny history with me. I never owned this album until last year or so, and I was looking forward to listening to it. And then after I listened to it, I realized I knew every single track on it. And not only did I know them on it, I'd been listening to them for years, and, and they were calling, a lot of them were burned out, and we're talking about Wish You Were Here. Every track on this is killer. They've all played a lot on the radio. This is one of their stronger albums. In some ways, it may be their strongest album. Um, definitely has like five really killer tracks on here. Especially I love Have a Cigar. That one I love quite a bit. And uh, Welcome to the Machine. Yeah, Welcome to the Machine. I have a history with that song. My friend of mine, who kind of got me into these guys a bit, um, had that song as his answering service to when you would phone him. He would get that. That would come on. Welcome to the Machine, yeah, so those two tracks, Absolutely Love You and Wish You Were Here, another great track. Not as crazy as, um, I'm not as big on the Shine On You Crazy Diamond Parts 1 or 2, but they're not bad either. Now we get into the final three, which are all very strong. The first one, Adam Hart, Mother. I know this album they didn't like, personally didn't like it. A lot of people think this is too pastoral that it it's just noise why have a cow on your cover you know um especially the adam hart mother side of the album a lot of people didn't really like that and then they just find the other side is kind of a kind of a different sound to it so pink floyd at this point was starting to change their directions um, moving much closer to where they would absolutely become but i still love this album i think it's fantastic it came out in 1970 their fifth studio album coming here at number three, Adam Hart Mother. 
So number two, easily these two are one and two. Um, for a long time, number one was easily number one, but now it's being challenged by number two, which is Dark Side of the Moon. Dark Side of the Moon's number two. For many people, this is not only Pink Floyd's best album, it's one of the best, if not the best album ever made. Every track on here is killer. Every song on here is fantastic. Whether you listen to this album just on a stereo system while you're driving in your car, or you put on your headphones, or you sit in the dark and listen to it, it's a fabulous, absolutely killer, fabulous album. Um, they use all the sound effects and noise effects to direct the album's storytelling right to the perfection. Absolutely killer album, number two. Number one for me, been number one since I got back in. This is the album that brought Floyd to me. Um, yes, I had was up during that time period when The Wall came out, and that actually put me off Pink Floyd for two decades until I bought this album one day on a whim uh, back in late 1988 when I bought a whole bunch of albums one day, and this sat on the shelf until my daughter was born, and I started playing it in the car while I was traveling around and discovered that I absolutely loved this album. Um, not right at first, though. It took a while. Um, when I, 2006 was, was a big year for me in music. This was one of the reasons because it became one of my favorite albums that year. So Animals is going to win this, number one. No doubt about it. It's the To me, it's the best Pink Floyd album. But it's now being challenged by Dark Side of the Moon, which many people say it should be the other way around. But that's the way it is for me. So I'm just going to reiterate them all. Um, from top to bottom, this time we'll go the other way. So you got Animals is number one. Dark Side of the Moon, number two. Adam Hart Mother, number three. Wish You Were Here, number four. Saucer Full of Secrets, number five. Isn't that a fantastic cover? Number six is Obscured by Clouds. Number seven is The Division Bell. Number eight, The Wall. Number nine, Metal. Number ten, More. Another music, music soundtrack. Um, number eleven, um, sorry, Momentary Lapse of Reason. I was having a momentary lapse there myself. Uh, number twelve, A Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Number thirteen, The Final Cut. Number 14, Amagama. And last, and definitely least, by a country mile, is the Endless River. So I hope that you have enjoyed this episode of Ranking the Albums. Uh, it's kind of fun to do it. I like doing them once in a while, but not too often, but I do like this. And I hope you liked it. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe. Don't forget to make any comments about any of the albums albums or your put your own ranking down there i'm curious to see how people see it this is one of those uh discographies also that is so varied by so many people some people absolutely love the stuff that other people absolutely hate and then they can't understand why certain albums aren't where they where they should be up the top right and they're not it's a very it's a very different well lot of opinions on this discography anyways Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified of more content in the future. And we will see you next Wednesday with another Wednesday Night Favorites. Take care.